ozone test for confirmation of uh, uh, reducing sugars. It was developed by Emil Fischer. Now, we have uh, got glucose, 2% glucose here, 2% maltose, 2% lactose, and other reagents involved are phenylhydrazine, sodium acetate, and glacial acetic acid. Now, first of all, we add approximately 5 ml of uh, 2% glucose solution to the first test tube followed by addition of uh, maltose and lactose to uh, uh, test tubes. So this is approximate addition only. Now we add phenylhydrazine in salt form, not in solution form. Excess of phenylhydrazine is added. I repeat, excess of phenylhydrazine ensures the appearance of ozone crystals. And this is important. Now this is followed by addition of uh, approximately 1 gram of uh, sodium acetate. Now ozones are formed by reducing sugars having free aldehyde or ketone groups in them. So sucrose do not give ozone reaction because sucrose is not having a free aldehyde or ketone group in it. So followed by addition of uh, uh, phenylhydrazine we add sodium acetate approximately uh, 1 gram as you can see. And this is followed by addition of uh, uh, approximately 10 drops of uh, glacial acetic acid and uh, uh, the mixture should be uh, mixed very well it has to be shaken properly mixed for which I'm using parafilling cover as you can see so the mixture will be mixing will be proper it is shaken well and all three test tubes in which glucose maltose and lactose are taken are um, properly labeled because we have to keep this in a boiling water bath for uh, half an hour. Glucose, maltose and lactose are taken to boiling water bath and kept it there for about 30 to 40 minutes. But uh, uh, glucose and fructose also uh, develops crystals uh, within 5 minutes. Fructose develops first followed by glucose. Now we are not using fructose here glucose crystals. Maltose and lactose will take more time. 30 to 40 minutes we have to keep it though. Uh, now glucose is taken out and kept in uh, cold water. It is properly cooled. Yeah, glucose is taken and the crystals or deposit is transferred to a clean glass slide using a pasta pipette and followed by uh, a cover slip which is uh, placed gently, carefully, without dragging or pressing. Now after 30-40 minutes, we can take out uh, uh, maltose and uh, lactose, uh, cooled, and we can clearly observe the precipitate in uh, lactose. But uh, in maltose, it is not uh, observable with the naked eye, but still, there will be uh, crystals which can be seen under microscope. Now the slides are observed under microscope low power 40x and can see the broom needle shaped crystals of glucose. This is directly from microscope. Cotton ball or tennis ball shaped crystals of lactose can also be seen. Then uh, sunflower shaped crystals of maltose uh, and directly from microscope, live from microscope. This is more clearly needle shaped crystals of glucose. Uh, touch me not flower, cotton ball, tennis ball shaped crystals of lactose and sunflower shaped crystals of uh, maltose. The difference in ozone crystal structure is due to different subgroups attached to the main carbon skeleton of these reducing sugars. Uh, we can see the principle of uh, uh, ozone crystal formation. Now, the, basically uh, it involves three phenylhydrazine molecules and if it is glucose, the first phenylhydrazine attaches to the first carbon C1 of uh, glucose and uh, form phenylhydrazone. The second phenylhydrazine molecule attaches to the OH group on the second carbon of glucose and the third molecule of uh, phenylhydrazine attaches to the first carbon again of uh, uh, glucose molecule. Now uh, the, the molecular rearrangements at C1 and C2 leads to phenylhydrazine formation at C1 and C2. And this is the structure of phenylhydrazine and the reaction involved phenylhydrazone and ozone formation explained in 1, 2, 3, 4 and 4B steps. The 4B step is actually hydrogen bond stabilization. Final stabilization of the structure is affected by hydrogen bond formation between phenylhydrazones on C1 and C2. So that is the principle. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you very much.